I know this model looks a little bit creepy and odd, but uh, it does a pretty good job of showing the cranial meninges and the different sinuses that we have in the skull. So if I turn our friend here to the side, what you can actually see, actually let me turn him this way first. What you can see is the cranium. So these are layers, layers and layers of skin and tissue, and now we're looking at skull. So if you remember, when we look at the skull, we had the frontal bone, we had the parietal bones, the occipital bone. Here was that coronal suture. Here's the sagittal suture. This is actually the crest right here, the apex of the lambdoid suture. But that's our skull. When we look uh, deep to the skull, as we go in here, then we start to look at this structure right here. If I take this off here, what you can imagine is the area where our brain would sit. Our brain's going to sit right inside here. And what happens here is our brain is held in place by these structures right here. This is dura mater. Okay, all of this that you're seeing here, all of this that you're seeing in here, well, I should say most of what you're seeing in here, is dura mater. Remember dura mater? arachnoid mater, pia mater, these are the layers. So this outside, really tough, strong layer, is what helps to hold our brain in place. Your brain's not just sloshing around inside your skull. It's held and kind of locked in place by this tissue. And what we have right here is something called the fulcs cerebri. Fulcs cerebri. Fulcs means sickle-shaped. Think of the old blades that farmers used to use when they cut the wheat or thrash the wheat, they would use a sickle. Folks, cerebri, because this is what is separating your two cerebral hemispheres. You can imagine one side of the brain here. If I flip it over, you can imagine the other hemisphere of the brain here. So this is the folks cerebri. What we have down here is the folks cerebelli. Folks cerebelli. Folks, because it's sickle shaped. I know it's a little bit hard to see from this angle, but it has a slight arc to it. Cerebelli, because your cerebellum is going to sit in this little cavity right here. And that also separates it slightly, doesn't cut it in half, but slightly into two hemispheres. The third structure we have, imagine again, your cerebellum is sitting here. And this right here that I'm tapping on would go and cover that up as I place this inside. And when it covers up your cerebellum, it covers it like a tent. That's where we get this right here. We call this the tentorium cerebelli. Tentorium cerebelli, because imagine my fist is the cerebellum, it's going to cover it like a tent. Tentorium cerebelli. So, folks cerebri, Tentorium cerebelli, and then Falk's cerebelli. I know the names are a little bit odd sounding, but when you think about what they actually mean, they do make sense. Another thing I want to point out since we're looking at this is the venous blood that's running through here. This right here this dark blue one that kind of runs right here, but is sort of embedded nicely within that dura mater is called the superior sagittal sinus. Remember the sagittal suture that runs right through here? This is the superior sagittal sinus. This is the inferior sagittal sinus. This is the transverse sinus. This one goes here. You'll see the, again, transverse sinus right here. And remember, when this one sits on like this, this is going to be your transverse sinus in there as well. And then these, we also have something called the straight sinus. Straight sinus runs through here. And at this point, where you have superior, inferior, straight, and transverse sinus, it comes together at the confluence of sinuses. Again, you can see that confluence of sinus right at this point right here.